partnering with other organizations to share services or resources can be advantageous for your business and theirs. In these instances, contracts are needed to ensure the details of the agreement are clearly defined and understood by all parties involved. Today, we'll go over the importance of contracts and when they are necessary for you and your business. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information are not intended to create, and receipt does not constitute an attorney-client or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. Only non-commercial uses of this work are permitted. During today's conversation, we'll discuss the basics you need to know about contracts, the information that should be included in a contract you're signing, and the best ways to assess the level of risk that an agreement may have on your business. When you enter into an agreement with another business entity, all details of your agreement should be noted in writing and signed and dated by both businesses. Avoid entering an agreement that is made verbally with no written guidelines, even if it is with someone you know very well, because there are many opportunities for misunderstandings and forgotten details. Different types of agreements come with varying levels of significance. Titles of agreements can often give insight into the agreement's magnitude of impact upon your business. A common contract between organizations is a memorandum of understanding, which is typically a lower risk agreement. Whenever you enter an agreement with another entity, make sure that the contract includes the business name, the business's physical and mailing address, if they differ, a contact person for each business, including phone number and email, the start and end date of the agreement, and the terms of payment, including the amount, date it's due, and the form of payment accepted. If you are paying another business to perform a service for you, you will have expectations about the quality of work you will be receiving. If the job is not completed in the way you thought it would be, then you have a right to dispute the work if you put your expectations in writing in a contract signed by both parties. Remember, always get clarification from a trusted source if you are unsure about anything in your contract. The more legally bound your business is to another entity, the greater risk your business could be taking on by entering the contract. It is in your best interest to have potentially higher risk contracts reviewed by a legal representative before you commit your business to the terms of the agreement. As contracts increase in levels of commitment and risk, there are more components to consider. Some signs that contracts might have a significant level of risk include the following. A large amount of money is being exchanged. Your business's profitability is critical to your business's health and success. If you are paying someone else to do a job for you, have you researched if they are reputable? Will you be able to verify that they are doing the job you are paying them for and that their performance meets your standards? It is most beneficial if you can add language to the contract that clearly states what happens if they don't do the job or if their performance doesn't meet your standards. Certain binding clauses are included. Toward the end of the agreement, it is common for medium to high-risk contracts to include legal phrases that intend to reduce risk. Think about whether the agency you enter an agreement with is trustworthy enough for you to take on their risk. Also, ensure that the contract protects you equally. Binding clauses do not mean you should not take on the contract, it simply is a flag that the contract has some level of risk and you'll want to confirm that entering the contract is in your best interest. People who aren't affiliated with your business are coming on site or your business is going on site to theirs. Whenever you are at someone else's location, they may be put in a position to accept responsibility if you are injured, unless you agree in writing to something otherwise. This is why you have liability insurance. If a child is injured in your home and a family suspects you are responsible, your liability insurance likely protects you from having to pay for medical or legal costs. Some contracts require proof of liability insurance or may ask you to add another business as an additional insured entity on your liability insurance. For more information, visit the Child Care Collaborative of Iowa website or email fmc at mitsu.org.